Gabrielle Puglio. Mark Ben. <laughs> Welcome to the Big Critique. Thank you for having me. Very excited. Thank you for finally making the time for me. I know you're a very busy woman. I don't really say that sarcastically. I know that's true. Um, so, you have a ton and almost nothing going on at the exact same time. You are the epitome of a conundrum. What's up with you? That's pretty much my whole life. That's going to be the title of yeah. my memoir. Um, of my memoir. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've been in finance for a decade now, and I've been burning the candle at every end, and the whole candle's on fire, and uh, now I took a step back from that, and pretty much just living a normal life right now. You are living the American dream. You went to pursue your dreams. You just up and quit your job. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's it. How, mu how much, like, cojones did that take on a scale of 1 to 10? Um, you know what? I'm not even going to lie. It took a couple years to be like, okay, this is the right decision. This is the right decision. So... A lot of planning, but I finally did it. So here we are. So you left your job mm -hmm. to do what? Um, I left my job to pursue my, my dreams, which are basically just changing the world and making it a little bit better. Um, so I am going back to grad school for something completely unrelated to finance. And something unrelated to that, I run a social fundraising initiative called the Heroes Benefit. The Heroes Benefit? The Heroes Benefit. What is that? <laughs> Um, so it's a social fundraising initiative that started in, uh, the idea started in 2011. We ended up having our first fundraiser in um, January of 2012. And we became biennial because there was Hurricane Sandy and then, you know, adult schedules just got kind of hard. Shit happens. Um, and, you know, they say that it takes businesses and relationships and, you know, marriages five years to actually be profitable. <laughs> um, so, you know, the Heroes Benefit, this is our fifth year anniversary this year, and we are now an annual fundraiser. We have, thank you. We have uh, a golf clap for you. <laughs> we have um, a Facebook and Instagram. We have email. Um, we managed to get like 100 or 200 new followers on Instagram in a week last month. That's um, awesome. So, not to cut you off, but I do want to ask um, how much time and effort do you put into doing that on Instagram? So, for people that are watching that maybe for starting to grow their own businesses. Are you engaging? Are you going into Instagram groups? Are you grinding Instagram? Or is that only because of the people that you've been meeting? Um, it's a little bit of both. It is, I'm really lucky to have a great team that goes out and they spread our word and they share our message, which is great. Um, I've been doing a lot more because I have more free time, which is great. Um, you know, when you only have about 10 hours a week to yourself and most of them are with grad school homework, you know, your fundraising initiatives kind of take a little bit of a, you know, back, back burner priority. Um, but luckily, I'm able to focus on it and give it my 110% right now. So um, for people that are starting with businesses, you know, it's good to post every day. Um, that's, that's what I heard. That's what I was told. And um, I definitely am seeing more traction with it. And you know, our demographics growing, which is great. Um, but yes, it is hard to find something to post every day. So I have been known to, you know, walk around the neighborhood and just take pictures of things that like, I think would be great content and then post it like two months later. <laughs> I will tell you a little secret of something that I learned. Um, you could, you, you're probably not supposed to do this, but you could probably just steal other people's content as far as like military stuff because you're a theme like that. But I like that you're not like keeping it just to like the military or whatever. Right. I mean, you could always take other people's Trying to keep it property. original. Um, I just, I don't want those legal issues. So we're all original all the time. Um, thank you. I'm loving these stuff. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we are military focused um, because that's where we started our roots with the fundraiser. Um, but, you know, we are open to all heroes and we do support a whole bunch of different causes. So, okay. To give people a little context, mm -hmm. Gabrielle, do you actually have anybody in your family or close to, remotely close to you in the military? No. <laughs> no. So then, what, what's your, like, times will get really tough for you, like, with this thing, probably. What's your why? What's going to keep you going when shit hits a fan and you have to, pro like, really go through? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I get this a lot because it's unusual for a civilian to be so gung-ho about the military. Mm -hmm. um, or anyone that it doesn't affect them directly, why would they be you know, so adamant about a cause? I'll be honest, in August of 2011, um, the Extortion 17 helicopter crash, it was a Chinook 47, um, and it was shot down. It killed um, 
I think in total it killed about 38 people and 31 of them were American um, Special Operations Forces. SEAL Team 6 who um, you know, found Osama bin Laden and killed him, they were killed in that crash. So I remember sitting at my desk watching the news and saying, you know, somebody has to do something. 32 kids lost their fathers and you know, I started, I've never thrown a fundraiser before, I just throw a mean party and um, I just kind of started seeing what I could do, looking around places at the neighborhood and that's it, January 2012 was our first fundraiser and it's uh, it's been pretty great since then. Our last one in September, we raised more than double what our first raise in 2012 was, so we look to just keep going more and more with that. Wow, that's, that's really something. I, like... I had this whole spiel in my head about like what I was gonna say to you, and like you just took my well, you didn't take my breath away because I'm talking now, but all right. So yeah, what what's the one thing this benefit is not doing? Um, it's not paying my bills. That's for sure. <laughs> like not even remotely. Not even remotely. It's every proceed that we get, um, whether it be donations or actually at the event and the raffles. Um, everything goes 100 percent to the cause. So. Well, aren't you a sweetheart? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You know what I love about what you did? What you did is you saw a televised event and like, so, okay, we do this every, we do this all the time as like, you know, people is, we'll see something on the news, on social media, there's a shooting in a school or something, some other terrible shit happens and everybody will, it'll start to trend or whatever and people will give their fucking their thoughts and prayers, and then about what, 24, 72, 48 hours later, I just eat like different increments of days randomly, <laughs> out of order, mind you. Like, it just, it dissipates until it happens again, right? So what I love that you did was you were like, you like took action with empathy. You were like, you know, I didn't lose anybody in this, but I really could, it wouldn't have been that fucking complicated for you to have lost somebody very close to you when that happened. And so you actually took action. Did she change the world? Not yet, but she very easily could one day. We could honestly, we could all learn a thing or two from you. Thank you. Like I'm not gonna take action like that to save the world, but I fucking hate this thoughts and prayers shit. Like if you're gonna post that, don't. It's not necessary. What the fuck is it gonna do? It's not gonna do anything. It's gonna get everybody emotional again and again and again and solve nothing. It's a fucking useless cycle. If you're watching this, stop posting thoughts and prayers. You wanna post thoughts and prayers? You can send us. Thoughts and prayers to our bank accounts. I can send you the, the fucking routing right. info. Like, no problem. But anything else is going to do shit. So anyway, so I, I'm really passionate about that because it really annoys when people do that shit. Because it does nothing. You know, I'm, I'm a big positive vibe person, so that's great. But, again, yeah, it's not a tangible difference. Um, you know, I, like it's very unrealistic to be like, I'm going to change the world. Because, I don't know about you, but I have not been to everywhere in the world. So... Um, you know, I like to do just small changes and try to make like a little difference in my life or in somebody's life every day. And that's like holding the door for the person behind you, saying good morning to your cranky bus driver, you know, holding the bus or the door and the train open for somebody to get in, you know, just little actions doesn't need to be a huge, big worldly change, but little actions will make eventually make somebody's day better. And that, you know, is a whole ripple effect. And I think from like every like entrepreneurial article or video I've ever seen, um, it, it pretty much went to the extent of what you're saying. Like, you might have a long-term goal in mind, um, but like, you're not gonna change the world overnight. You're not gonna be a millionaire overnight. And you're not gonna get rich and famous overnight. So whatever your long-term goal might be, you you do it in like small, small increments, you know. And by small increments, she exactly what she's saying. She's saying. Something small every day to, to move your business along. Right. You know, or whatever it is, you know, this isn't like it's a business for you, but it's not really a business more so just like your baby that one day will yeah. get you just somewhere that you want to go. This is my golden child. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, again, it's everybody just looks at the big picture and the end goal. And you know, it's not really about that. It's all of the little steps that get you there and you know, progress, not perfection. So We've learned a lot from our first benefit in 2012, and this is our fifth anniversary. We're now going annual. I mean, that's great. You know, we definitely learned a lot in that time. I love that you're so that you've been like this entire time so practical about everything, and like mind you, you started this when like okay, so let's let's bring some some buzzword names up. 
So there's these guys like Gary Vaynerchuk or like Tony Robbins or like these guys that are really big on fucking social right now. And they're giving you the instructions. They're giving all the same instructions on this is how they did it. And other people, other businessmen and celebrities have come forth saying, yes, you're 100% correct. This is how it works. They're all giving us, I don't want to say the golden eggs because 99% of us won't be able to maintain the consistency that they are. And that's just a fact. Like, I would love for this, this big critique thing to blow the fuck up to it like a Joe Rogan one thing, level one day. Not going to happen in five years. Joe Rogan took 20 to 30 years for that to happen. Like, this is a very long-term thing. So before any of that stuff became like a thing for us to read on our social media feeds or like for somebody to share a video, you were already doing it. You were already really practical about shit and you were like, I know I can't change. I've never been to fucking Africa. I mean, I assume you haven't been to Africa. You know, you're like, you're not going to change the way African people think, but you can start in your local bar yeah. and then maybe one day the good news will spread. So that's fucking dope. There's not much more anybody could really ask for. Yeah, I mean, you know, I would love to be going around and doing mission trips and, and, you know, teaching English or, you know, helping feed, you know, countries or other things. Um, but that's just not something I can do right now. It's not feasible. And I think, you know, I love Gary Vee. I'm a huge fan. But I think, you know, he tries to give a lesson to kind of make people think of how they can apply it to their life. And it's not necessarily quantifiable and people don't really get that they're like oh well he's famous i'll be famous and you know maybe you will um but Possible. social media is all about the highlight reel and you don't really get people's full story because yeah. you know my journey is not going to be the same as your journey and it just takes everybody a different amount of time and there's nothing wrong with that and as long as you're just making progress you know however small every day i mean today i walked around the neighborhood getting donations and spreading the word about my fundraiser for four hours in the heat <laughs> on foot <laughs> and you know I mean that's just doing the work and a lot of people knew me and a lot of people in my neighborhood do know about the Heroes Benefit but for those that don't you know I was walking around with my tote bag and we had our logo on it and some people saw me talking to somebody and asked for a flyer so it's just really doing the work and how much you want to give to be able to get what you want. So let's let's see if um, you end up working into the equation of some some famous people and shit that they've preached. So I don't know if I told you this. I went to uh, my fiance and I went to um, a real estate wealth expo thing this last weekend, which um, I might I'm gonna post a different video about that just to give you guys a little idea of what actually went on there. But <clears throat> a lot of people said to me, "Oh, you're gonna go to that? It's it's probably gimmicky. They're gonna sell you stuff." And yes, of course they try to sell you stuff. That's what they're there for. They're there to capitalize Name on shit. Game. Name of the game. It is what it is. I don't hate because that's everybody's here to make money, right? But so when you hear, when you heard these entrepreneurs talk, Tony Robbins, Robin Herjavec, um, Pitbull was there, whatever, they all preach very, very similar equations. It's like if you want to be in the 1%, means 99% of us won't do it. Like practically speaking right now, the odds of you getting to be where they sit are way higher than me getting to be where they sit because of the amount of work that you've put into it thus far and how consistent you've been. You have like, not to say that you're like that far above me, but you definitely levels ahead of me and that's fine. I've also been in the game for a long time. hundred percent. You know, this only this past year or two have we really gotten big and consistent. And again, you know, we're on social media and we're doing our best. Um, but I think what makes the heroes benefit so different is that I have no expectations with it. Like I was just, I started it when I was in my early twenties and I was just a girl in a bar who wanted to make a difference. Um, and you know, now I'm still that person, but I don't expect to make a profit from it. I don't expect to be famous from it. Um, I've been really lucky that it's, you know, a cause that really resonates with a lot of people. Yeah. So I have gotten to do some cool things. Um, I got to accompany the Medal of Honor recipient, David Bellavia, Sergeant, Staff Sergeant David Bellavia. That's great. That's awesome. Thank you. At the New York Stock Exchange for the bell ringing. So that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I've won a couple of awards for the Heroes Benefit, including um, Courier Life's Brooklyn Women's of Distinction. So it's really cool, and I've gotten to be exposed to such amazing opportunities while talking about something that I love and I'm really passionate about. So, so what I've seen, what I've seen people ask, uh, because at the end of the day, this is like you know a business-related podcast. <laughs> what I've seen people ask, like realistically speaking, what time do you get up in the morning? Um, 
now with my retired life, I get up around like seven when I was working full time and going to school and doing this. I was waking up at 4 a.m. to make sure everything was done. And what time are you going to bed? Um, between 10 and 11. Okay, right. So like, you grind it. Like, so I also saw that for a while you were posting in your workout routine. I was. But I guess you just like, maybe you just didn't feel like doing it anymore. You didn't have time for it anymore or... You know, it's any kind of juggling act, right? The more balls you have in the air, the more likely one of them is to fall. Um, right. You know, I love fitness. I really do like working out. I enjoy it. It's my me time. Um, unfortunately, I don't get a lot of me time these days. So, you know, if it was between working out at 4 a.m. or waking up to write a paper or waking up to, you know, make baskets for our upcoming fundraiser or send people emails, like I obviously chose the things that we're going to get me closer to my goal. Like being fit is great and I'm not knocking anybody that's like skinny and healthy. That's awesome. you know, something I had to give. So I chose waking up at 4 a.m. to work on the hero's benefit or write a paper as opposed to working out. So that's not to say that I completely gave up on it. I just, you know, didn't make it the 90% focus of my life anymore. So on a practical note, you just knew you couldn't do everything. And you're like, all right, this is the least important thing to me right now. I'm gonna let it go. And that's fine. I mean, again, like any kind of business or any kind of goal, you do need to prioritize and sacrifice and reprioritize. And, you know, last year it was giving up fitness for a bit. And, you know, this year it was giving up my full time job. And, you know, you just have to continuously reprioritize what's important to you and what you're doing every day to get to the goal you want. All right, guys. So there you have it. Here are all the practicalities of somebody who left a job she was miserable at to pursue a life that she dreamt of in the most practical way possible. So you had a little nest egg, so you're not starving. Um, oh, yeah. there, you won't be, I'm sure. I'm sure you will find your way. Um, there's plenty of, I'm sure you bartended or whatever. There's, there's, you know, you said you were babysitting and stuff. Yeah, um, you know, there's definitely, the good thing about Brooklyn is, you know, at least in my neighborhood, everybody knows your name. It's like Cheers and yeah. you're, <laughs> always willing to help out so you know anytime somebody's looking for help or you know has knows of a gig they send it my way which is great are you on fiverr or any of that stuff what's that i'll put you on later <laughs> um well i guess i'll bring it up now fiverr for anybody who doesn't know and you're the second person i've spoken to this week who didn't really know so fiverr is a place where freelancers or entrepreneurs or what have you can list your skills there and ask for money to get paid for them Wow. Yeah, I will show you after this, this session. Awesome, uh, thank you. I actually just posted something myself out of like, it was kind of a joke, but I'm curious to see if I get hit any hits. Um, well, so I guess that, that pretty much covers everything. Yeah. You are living the dream of practicality. Trying, trying. Now she's being the most, she's, she's trying to accomplish everything she wants to, and yet still being as practical as humanly possible about it. And that's fucking awesome. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This is, once again, Gabrielle Puglia. What's the name of your benefit again? Thank you. It is the Heroes Benefit. Right. So we're going to have links to the Heroes Benefit in the comments. Um, yeah, and all that stuff. Guys, if you found this at all valuable, or even if you didn't, hit the like, hit the subscribe button and the alarm button. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.